Good morning. So, like you said, uh, my name is Ryan. I'm from the Lazy Tiger, a traveler's hostel here in Asheville. Um, and just a quick show of hands, get a feel for the group. Who has stayed in the hostel before? That awesome. That's why I like living in Asheville. You know, that would be crickets in Atlanta, where I came from. Um, and then, who, if I show up, has seen that awful movie Hostel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Oh, I didn't think it was awful. Uh, okay. Perfect. Um, so hopefully it's nothing like that. But what am I doing? So, I'm building a 24-person hostel uh, focused on you know, fostering community amongst travelers and allowing strangers to become friends. So, we'll have shared rooms and private rooms, a fully stocked communal kitchen, um, lots of open common areas, you know, kind of core to the hostel. Any good hostel is that it's really easy to meet other people, and the uh, common areas will allow you to do just that. And then we are currently under construction, so I bought some land and doing new construction. We broke ground uh, February of last year. We had an eight to nine month timeline and uh, just missed it, so uh, shooting for April or May now, kind of depending on how optimistic I am. Um, but why open a hostel, right? That's the kind of question that everybody asks. A little bit about my background, I worked at Home Depot's corporate office for eight years, uh, better part of eight years, and I didn't hate the work, I didn't necessarily hate the company, I'm not an entrepreneur that just despised having a boss. Um, I had two main problems. So, the travel bug had bit me hard by then, um, and I saw our vacation policy and those things just didn't align. Um, and then I had you know, trouble feeling like I was making an impact at a company that large. You know, it's a $80 billion company, and I would have a project of save a million dollars, and it felt kind of like a rounding error. So I didn't know what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, the rest of my career. I just knew it wasn't that. Then the problem becomes, well, what do you do? How do you figure that out, right, at 30? I decided to go and figure it out in South America. So I took a leave of absence from work. Uh, they were really great, by the way. Uh, and bought a one-way ticket to Santiago. And you know, I won't talk about the trip in detail here a lot, but suffice to say it was incredible, right? I hit five countries over nine months, saw every landscape you could possibly imagine. Um, I really just put these pictures up here so you think I'm cool. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's working. Um, but more importantly, I stayed in a bunch of hostels, right? I was traveling alone in Spanish-speaking countries, and it would've been really easy for me to get homesick, for me to get lonely, you know, someone that craves connection. So um, the hostels really, you know, those common areas were a game changer for me. Um, and there was one in particular in Tocón, which is uh, kind of an, an adventure town in Chile that, that pushed me over the edge. So, you know, the second you check in, they had a great tour, they, they had connections to all the guys in town. Um, you know, big, nice common area, this bar that overlooked the lake here, um, really easy to meet people. And I realized that it was easier for me, you know, I had a better time in Pucón just because of where I stayed than if I would have stayed somewhere else. Um, and I decided that's the, the feeling that's, that I wanted to deliver to others. I wanted to, you know, change travelers' trips. Um, and I didn't know what that exactly looked like, but from there, I started taking notes. So every single hostel I was in, I decided what I liked, what I didn't like. And the Lazy Tiger is my attempt at combining all those features. So how does the business work? Um, it's fair, like how do you make money selling bumps to hippies? Um, so we'll have bumps and private rooms. Um, the prices are up there. We do have one ADA compliant private room with its own bathroom. Um, so we'll charge a bit more for that. Distribution-wise, we'll be listed on Airbnb, on Hostel World, and take bookings through our own website. Um, you know, ideally, we'll get as many bookings as we can through our own website as other sites, charge a healthy commission, but, um, you know, when I first start off, it's really helpful to get extra eyeballs on it. And then the ideal customer, you know, if you ask me right now, my ideal customer is anybody over 18 with a functioning credit card. <laughs> but, you know, I think they'll generally classify as, uh, you know, adventure seekers, right? Hikers, bikers, kayakers, musicians and artists coming into town. Um, but more generally, people who just would rather spend money on experiences or memories um, rather than an expensive hotel room. Location-wise, we are here, uh, 104 Weaver Road, so it's kind of a straight shot uh, out north from downtown. 
Um, we sit on about a half acre, so I do think this location will be kind of the best of both worlds, where you know if you want to chill and hang out, we'll about a half a quarter acre of green space, and backs up to a, a very small creek. It's a creek. Um, <laughs> we'll have some hammocks out there. We'll have a good place to chill and get, you know, just get some sun. But you're also close enough in the town where you can pop off to anything you want to be. And we're really close to the new whitewater wave that's going on in Woodfin. If you don't know about that, they're building a surfing wave in the French Broad. It's ridiculous. But I think it's going to be great. And, and we're the closest to that. You know, all close to breweries, reverse district, really close to the highways. So you can get to hiking destinations really easily. Um, so I think the, the location will work out well. And then, you know, what will lead to our success? I think I'm going to try and get really good at these three things. And if I can, if I can nail these, then I think it'll be successful. So, you know, from a community piece, it's all about removing barriers, make it really easy to meet people. And that goes from the big stuff, like how the building's laid out, where I have kind of intentionally small bedrooms and larger open common areas to nudge people out, um, or activities I plan. So, you know, I'm going to experiment with a ton of different things, but kind of playing around with this idea of a tech challenge where everybody throws their phone in a box, right? Whoever decides they need to go touch it first buys the next round. There's little things to kind of encourage people to be more present. You know, from a convenience piece, it's just I want to make it as easy as possible for somebody to have fun while they're here. So, um, you know, I don't want people to spend time planning or Googling. I want them to spend time doing and having fun. So we'll have, um, you know, we'll have custom hiking, biking, and kayaking recommendations. You know, we'll, we'll do the curating of the thousand options on all trails and get it down to 10 and say, hey, here are things you can vouch for. Go have fun. We'll sell local beer on site, so you can sample a few before you decide what brewery you want to go out to the next day. And we'll have kayaking and biking storage on site, and we'll have discounts for local vendors, and all these things just make it really easy, really effortless to have fun. And then the last piece, um, customer service. And I think it's probably the most important thing I'll do. Um, I actually prefer the term hospitality. Uh, the weird thing about hospitality is it doesn't start with a C, so it ruins the slide. <laughs> <laughs> but no matter what you want to call it, uh, it's it's a feeling. You know, Danny Meyer talks about it's the art of like giving your customers a feeling, and that's how I like to think about it. For me, it's the feeling of you know feeling safe, feeling comfortable, feeling like you're at a little home away from home, you know, like you have a family of sorts while you're on vacation, and you try and do that by having a you know, bunch of little details constantly reminding the customer that you're on their mind, you know, that they're always our number one priority. So I think, you know, if I can, if I can nail those three things, um, it'll be successful. So, so lastly, you know, they always ask this, what, what can the community help me do? Um, mainly, you can help me spread the word, you know, especially as I, especially as I get started, my big challenge is letting people know that it's even an option to book. So if you have people coming to town, you know, in-laws, you don't want to stay at your house. Um, I will happily take them. Um, or, and also just introductions, right? So if you know companies who host out-of-town groups, whether it's yoga trainings or art classes or anything like that, they're, they're, they might be the place to stay. I'd like to talk to them. Um, and same for restaurants or you know, excursion companies, tour guides, that sort of thing. Um, if they might be interested in offering a discount to my guests as a marketing expense, I'd like to talk to them as well. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot of cold calling, um, but you know, soft intro is always helpful. So you know, feel free to reach out. I'd love to, to talk more about it. Um, and yeah, that's what I got. So thank you all for listening. Okay, questions? How do you get a shirt? <laughs> How do I get a shirt? Questions, how do you get a shirt? Uh, question. We have like one left currently, and I don't remember the size, like maybe an extra large if you're lucky, like New Year's. We'll have some new ones coming in like in March probably. But there is merch list on the website. Um, it's a very manual process right now, but we'll, we'll share more about it if you want to order it. Um, why is it called Lazy Tiger? It's a good question. Uh, I actually spent a lot of time thinking about names, too much time. Um, really decided in the end that it just needed to be like 
I mean, catchy, easy to remember, not offensive. Actually, somehow came up with a couple options that people found offensive. I think I'm a pretty nice guy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I went to Auburn, so that's where the tiger came from. The lazy piece is kind of like a lazy Sunday, like a good easy place to relax. So that's where it came from. Hi, good morning. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering what sort of environmental measures you're taking in the new construction side of things and just to mitigate traffic. And are, are you promoting sort of shuttles or buses or things to get people into town? Because some of the new hotels have issues with traffic and, um, and, and just in new building construction. Just wondering what sort of measures you're taking. Yeah, I mean, on the construction piece, uh, the county does a, a good job of regulate, regulating a lot of that. We're in a flood zone, actually, so we have to elevate out of it and, and make sure we're not uh, disturbing the flood zone. I mean, I think from a traffic perspective, we are only 24 people. Um, I'd be surprised if I generated any real noticeable traffic, but um, I think probably half the guests will have cars. Um, we're, like I said, we're just outside of Asheville, so ART comes close, but it's not, you know, it's, you'd have to walk to a bus station where I'm, where I'm at. So, short answer is not a ton as far as saving the environment or that sort of thing, but, you know, certainly being conscious of, of what we do and, and how we operate. Okay. I was just curious, I think you just said, what's the capacity? 24. So we have 20 bunks and two private rooms. Just counting my inbox. Yep. Well, I'm now down to 22. 20. <laughs> Um, I actually am here in Asheville because of an experience I had at a hostel. And so I love, I love this idea and I think it's really important. Um, when I had just graduated from college, I didn't have you know, enough funds to stay at like Airbnb or a hotel or anything like that. But I could stay downtown at Sweet Peas and explore the city and decide whether or not I wanted to move here. Um, and Asheville doesn't have enough of that. So I'm really excited about your business model, and I don't have any questions. I just wanted to share that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I agree with you. I think it's great. Uh, I actually, you know, before I settled on this location, I was looking at the city limits of Asheville, um, and I was kind of having to play mini lobbyists for a while. Zoning's a bit more complicated there, and um, I actually met with, with Julie Mayfield at one point, and you know, she talked about the one worry she has is Asheville becoming you know, not accessible to all different types of tourists, right? It's, if all we have is $400 a night hotel rooms, and they're gonna say they're expensive if we stop building them, then um, you know, that we would, might start boxing people out. So I think giving people, you know, tourism's not gonna slow down in my opinion. I think that's a losing battle to fight. Um, but at least allowing it to be open to many different types of people to come check out you know, the place where we live, so. How did you come to those rates, Ryan? Uh, kind of just rolling the dice, picking numbers out of a box. No, I mean, it's 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 what I've paid for in other places. It's similar to what other hostels are charging around town. And that'll be really flexible. I mean, A, you know, the numbers have to work, right? So I have financial projections and all that, and I need to be able to make money. But, um, you know, I'll probably charge less midweek than I will on a weekend or get discounts out. That's it. Cool. Do you have signage up on the location? And I asked this because I've actually, I know where exactly this is and I've driven by it and been like, what is that going out there? And just thinking if, if you do, maybe it needs to be bigger, or maybe it's gone up recently, but just thinking from the standpoint of getting the word out, um, you know, you'll get inbounds of people being like, what's going on here? You know, if you have it up there, if you don't already. Yeah, thank you. I, I have a, a flag sign, very generic, that says hostile. Um, and depending on which way the wind blows, it's actually very readable or not readable at all. <laughs> so we are working on a more permanent side, but yeah, I think it's a good idea. I had a question about it. You're talking about the 24 rooms, uh, two of them are private rooms. Um, do you have any other financial offerings that you're going to have for your guests? I use some sort of experience. You can take them rafting and charge a margin on top of that and facilitate those tours. Off the bat, probably not. So, you know, the vast majority of my revenue will come through bed revenue. And then I'll have beer and wine sales and merch sales will be a you know, drop. But off the bat, I think there's a lot of people around here that run good tours. And I don't want to start trying to compete with them. You know, I want to focus on trying to be really good at what I do. And then have those connections, right? So say, hey, you want a good 
want a good hiking tour, here's a guy. But until I'm staffed up, you know, I'll start with a staff of one. There's you know, 20 chefs during the week, and I'm gonna work every single one. Eventually, I'll hire people. But yeah, you know, doing my own guide, guided hikes or something like that would be a, an addition. Hey, uh, I want to ask a question about your construction process. So, um, what's in retrospect, what's one thing that went super well and was a surprise, and then obviously flips on the point with one thing that, oh my gosh, just went, went bad. And, and so what kind of advice we have for your previous self? Hmm. Went to the table, what's gone well for a second. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, I have, a, I have a really good builder who I like a lot. Um, it took me a while to settle on one who would you know, take the time to give me a reasonable quote and that kind of thing, but him and I work really well together. Um, I quoted this out the last time in uh, November of 2021 when prices were at its peak. So some of those have come down, some have continued to soar. Um, but yeah, I mean, really the, the hardest thing right now is just cost. Um, you know, anything metal, steel uh, is expensive, anything concrete is still super expensive. So, you know, I have a construction budget. Unfortunately, I'm not independently wealthy, so I have the money that the bank has agreed to give me. Um, and trying to narrowly stay within there is, has been difficult. We'll get there. So your communal space, is there room to do like a yoga class or do meetings in that communal space? So when you bring, when you said with companies and different people coming, would they rent that also to do the meetings? <coughs> no. Um, so I might have events, uh, kind of off schedule events for, for locals, um, but it's, I don't only have 15, 16 parking spots, so it's not going to be a great space to kind of merge locals and travelers, unfortunately, on site. I guess what I meant by um, people who bring it out of towners is if they, if they have the space, right, if they're teaching the class, but they, their guests need somewhere to stay, and just making that connection. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So what are you doing to automate? As you're starting this up on your on your own, you're gonna be doing all the shifts, all the things. Like what measures have you taken or are going to take to ease your workload? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, from a software side, uh, you know, there's pro property management software kind of designed for hostels that'll handle a lot of the booking and sending out emails or reminders and, and checking notes and that sort of thing. Um, and then really it's about process. I mean, a lot of the work I'll be doing is really hands-on, and so why I'm hesitant to hire somebody right off the bat is I want to get it really right, uh, and that put me in an issue of mine is giving up control, but so really documenting exactly what I want to do and how I want to do it, so I can easily, when I hire somebody, say, hey, here's what I'm training about them and get it done right. Okay, so there's this um, software no, I think it's called the that um, you know they use in a lot of co-working spaces, at least in New York, and well, all over the place. And so, when somebody checks in, or when somebody um, rents a room and it's their check-in day, they'll get like a code, and it'll be like an app on the phone. They'll just put their phone or their watch up to the KC app or up to the KC hardware, and then it'll let them in. So it'll be their private encrypted. Just for that time, um, have you looked into any like key stuff like that? That way, you don't have to always be on site. You know? Yeah, so I will have um, automated entry into the building. That you right now, it's just a it'll be a key code. That sounds much cooler, so I'll have to look into that. But um, yeah, I definitely don't want it to be. I mean, it needs to be locked and needs to be secure. But I don't want to be the guy who has to be opening the door. So there will be. We call that. Yeah, I guess that is automation that counts. Yeah. Uh, in my early years in life here, I was a uh, front office manager at uh, a few hotels. Uh, hospitality sucks. Are you looking for a job? <laughs> 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 I'm not. All right, now. maybe. We'll see what happens. We're driving in, all the getting laid off. We'll see what happens. We have more fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot to consider, especially with those bigger properties, you know, uh, like standard operating procedures and, you know, what are your standards and, you know, We've had to kick people out of rooms before. I'm curious if you have like a, a list of things that would get someone kicked out of your hostel. <laughs> or not. I don't. Actually, I like to kind of think about putting my head in the sand and not 
thinking about the bad guests. It's much more fun to think about the, the fun ones. Um, I mean, I will come up with a list, I imagine, but it'll, yeah, it'll be, as long as you're treating people with respect, uh, you can stay. As long as you start making people feel unsafe, then you have to go. Um, it's kind of the viewpoint of how I think about it, but we'll see. The first one will happen at some point, right? I don't know. Um, with the, uh, so you can be connecting people to, you know, like um, activity companies, things like that. Will you have some type of revenue share with them, you think? Will you be able to get some portion of that? Off the bat, I just want to pass that discount on to the customer. I want it to be a perk of booking with me. We'll see what it looks like, and if it's really lucrative, then and maybe I go back and, and negotiate with that. But, you know, I, I want it to be, hey, I could stay at a random Airbnb and have a bed, or I could stay at a lazy tiger and have, you know, get these extra perks as well. Be just a feature I offer. When you were staying in the hostel in South America, how long were you there at that one hostel? That stay, I was there for four days. So you know, most stays would be between four days and a week, something like that. Okay, so that's that's average for hostels like one one day to a week. Yeah, I mean the the model down there is a bit different too. You know, it's a lot of people like me who are on longer trips. Um, I think maybe I'll have some of that, but it might also be more kind of one-off stays. Um, I will have a max day of 14 days, um, just to be on the safe side of not wanting to get into landlord tenant laws and things like that. You know, if, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not a housing organization, right? so um, uh, there will be a cap with that, but most people will stay a lot less. You mentioned that you took out a loan and you're trying to work in that kind of budget. There is no more pressure, I think, as an entrepreneur when you mortgage your house or take out a bank loan to fund your business. At what point did you come to say, I'm all in, full send, and I've got the confidence to do that? Because that's a huge leap. Yeah, it is a huge leap. Um, full confidence, I'm not sure I'm there yet, but I'm definitely all in. Uh, I signed, signed everything that the bank tells me to. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I was just so sure that what I was trying to do just wasn't going to work. Right. Um, I think probably when I quit my job, I had a really nice salary, and all of a sudden I went away. Like that had the like, that was like, all right, this is happening. Um, I moved up here, and it became more concrete. You know, I think I started working on this in 20. I mean, I was traveling in 2017, so it's been the better part of four or five years that this has been um, this has been an idea. And I've been talking about it for so long. I think some of my friends back home are like, oh, is this guy, this is guy doing it? Is he really? Now I have half of the building to show up, so it's happening. But, um, yeah, it's a big leap for sure. Uh, so when I was younger, I did a lot of traveling in Central America, South America, stayed in a lot of hostels. Um, at this point, I remember a few fondly based on like how they were unique compared to others. Uh, for example, a place in Honduras, your stay there included free bicycles, guitars, there was a fire every night. Um, I'm curious what you are doing or going to do to make yours like unique compared to like your competitors and why somebody would choose uh, your hostel over somebody else's. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try a lot of different things. Um, I have some you know smaller ideas, right? So little things from you know asking when you book like are you celebrating anything, right? And then when you check in, have a small gift for them. Or you go up to your bed and there's going to be a little fortune cookie on the pillow instead of a little chocolate nap. Um, but really it's just, I'm going to try and exceed expectations, right? I want people to leave and they get, they get home and they get asked, you know, how was your trip to Asheville? I don't really want them saying like the Biltmore is cool, and I think Biltmore is cool, but I want them to be like, yeah, I stayed at this hostel, it was really neat, and you won't believe what they did. I don't need a mic. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. You should, would you? Uh, I know you don't want locals to be there, but would you be open to having locals volunteer to help with different hospitality stuff? Because I think it would be really fun. I'm very open to free labor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which we should connect. Uh, yeah. Well, generally not have locals. Um, that's a you know policy most places have. Uh, that will be up to manager discretion, so um, that policy can be waived if needed. But uh, but yeah, I will have certainly open volunteers. A lot of that in the hospital world looks like work stays, so you, know, you 
exchange for three shifts a week, you get a free bunk for people that are kind of traveling along. So I'll have some of that as long as well as like actual employees um, who get paid. So. Yeah, thank you, Chad. Hey, Ryan. So the big hotel brands, they all have the rewards programs, like the loyalty programs. Is there a loyalty program for like all hostels? Like, are you guys in one big group? There's not um, that I'm aware of. It's it's not a bad idea. I think what's been, what's missing is the um, somebody to take the lead and do it. You know, I will have a I don't know exactly how it looks like, but have a referral program just for myself. So you refer five guests, you get a night free, something like that. Um, but I think it would be cool to say, hey, yeah, you stayed at eight places up the East Coast, and we'll get some benefit from all of this. But it's not there yet. Spend a good portion of my youth traveling all over Europe in hostels. And uh, one of the things I thought was very cool was when we had our eye on a specific hostel and they were full, they would have, they would know exactly who else close by had a similar vibe and events available. Um, I don't know, I think there's one other hostel in Nashville right now. But that's something you guys will collaborate on, and so it's such a nice hospitality. <laughs> Yeah, there's, so there's two in town. There's uh, Sweet Peas downtown and Mount Paul and Sharpies over in West Asheville. And I, yeah, if I'm full, I will happily send them to either of those places. I've stayed at both um, very nice spots. You know, my plan does not involve either of them going out of business. I think there's lots of lots of room to go work to go around. So we'll happily uh, work with it. Are you in a hostile network like uh, like nationally or in? Um Internationally? Is there like a network of hostels that. So, you mean like kind like, of a. Like a map, or, you know, if you go to Abingdon and then they, you're coming to Asheville and you're staying at a hostel up there, you're like, hey, is there one in Asheville you recommend? So. It's all very informal right now. Um, actually, 2019, there was a movement to kind of start one up. They had their own Slack channel, it's really fancy, and then it just kind of died with COVID. Um, I do have some relationships with other hostel owners. You know, you don't start a hostel owner generally if you're an asshole. So people have been really friendly and really helpful with their time. Um, uh, my friend Joe down in Greenville runs Modal, which is a hostel and coffee shop down there. Is a great hostel over in Chattanooga that's been super helpful to me. So I kind of know the ones around us. Um, but yeah, there could be could be work to do on, on making that a bit more official. I actually stayed in a semi-hostel in Athens a few what, a few months ago. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So when this one's successful, where's the next location going to be? Uh, I don't know. Um, I've thought about either opening another hostel somewhere else um, or opening a different kind of lodging option here in Nashville. Um, i got to figure out how to make one successful first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Hi, um, I like your group piece. Um, you mentioned the community. Um, can you talk a little bit about that um, in terms of a differentiator amongst your peer set here? So how, how do you see generating community there and the kind of vibe you want to have to get that house Yeah, I mean, it's just a couple, couple thoughts. Um, you know, like in each bunk room, we'll have Sounds simple, but like a whiteboard with a bunk number and somebody's first name on it, right? So when a stranger walks in and lays down, you may have met the night before, but you don't remember. Like it's really easy to say hi. Or there'll be sign-ups in the kitchen, so if people want to plan communal dinners where they can eat and cook together, um, little things like that. You know, I don't want to be super heavy-handed. You know, in the perfect world, the staff has to do nothing, and it's just natural. Um, that doesn't always happen, so I'll just try and give little introductions when I can. So when it comes to questions, you actually do need the mic because we're recording. Oh, oh <laughs> So who would like the mic? Yeah, so I'll have uh, a soft launch where probably the first two weekends will be all friends and family. So uh, no matter how I screw up, they will definitely give me a good review. Uh, we, they also have to sign something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and actually, a good thing I picked up. So 
I worked uh, after I quit Home Depot, which is not that uh, relevant of experience for this. I moved up here and I worked at, at Abington Green, which is a bed and breakfast here in town. Um, and one of the things they did that I like is, you know, as part of their thank you email when they were leaving, they took a brief kind of talk on did this person have a great stay or not. And if they did, kind of send, you know, include in that in that email like, hey, here's a really easy way for to review. Um, and so, you know, if, you're not, if somebody has a bad time, they're going to tell people about it. So you try and minimize that, but also it's like make it really easy for people to give reviews um, when you know they've had a great time. You mentioned earlier where um, I, I don't have experience with hostels and how to find them, but you said um, that you get access on Airbnb or wherever the platforms. How do you do? Is it like a whoever signs up first, or is there a discerning process where you've got like Airbnb, you know, you rate each other or whatever? Like how much control do you have over who comes? Um, so it'll be booking, like you don't need confirmation from me before you book. I want that to be as seamless as possible. The property management software has a channel manager, so it manages your inventory for you. So you know, when a bed gets booked on Airbnb, it gets removed from everywhere else, so you don't have to worry about overbooking. Um, and I suppose there's a way I can block customers if uh, I get a problematic one. But um, yeah, I don't want uh, people to have to reach out and ask, and then, you know, I want it to be as easy as possible for somebody to get into Ryan. Okay. Let me pull up the list of how soon you should compromise. But as you know, friends and family are notoriously difficult to get critical feedback from. So I think maybe you want to go with some professional associates from an informal setting. <laughs> <laughs> maybe people don't like coffee. Yeah, exactly. Just spend a little Yeah, starting soon, I will have. Um, We'll lead some tours through the construction site, probably on Saturdays when nobody's working, but um, we'd like to open it up to those and see if we can kind of see what's going on. I just have a question about your thinking around how you will deal with the local population who, for whom $40 a night is a very cheap bed, and nothing else is available. Yes, yeah, so I will require an out-of-area ID and a credit card in the name of whoever's booking. Um, it's a pretty common policy amongst hostels. That's, you know, I think the homeless population is unfortunate. It's just not the problem I'm trying to solve. Um, and it, you know, it can uh, dampen the vibe a little bit. Um, not to say that people from out of town can't be a problem too, but yeah, so it'll be, it'll be just a, an easy requirement. That's the way it's, you don't have to be rude about it. It's just be me not a very ID. I have a, a slight idea for you on the locals. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of buzz around either when I was a kid, I went and traveled and lived in a, you know, stayed in a hostel, whatever. Um, for locals, what you could do is create a community around hostels of people that have traveled outside of this area. So if I'm looking to go to Aberdeen, I think was mentioned, then you might have a list of people that have stayed at the Aberdeen Hostel, who I could then go stay at. So that's a, just a little bit of, get, of an idea. So, sorry, clarify that for me. So the network is people in other parts of town. So as people come to your hostel, yeah. they have traveled likely to other hostels, right? And so they could, you could then be a collection for, hey, I'm a local in Asheville, I want to travel to hostels. How do I find a great network? Because it sounds like there's a gap in hostel travel. Like I looked on the internet just now and found Hostels International USA is the only organization that I had and it looks like they only have 30 hostels in the United States listed, whereas they have some 300 or 400 international. So there's a, there's a gap that I'm seeing in the experience of staying in a hostel. Because I also traveled to hostels when I was you know, in my younger years as well. And I invited all three of my children to come to this presentation because they all are of age to be traveling and staying in hostels. It's an awesome experience. So I'm just looking for like, it's a unique offering to be a hostel rather than be just a multi-person stay. There's an opportunity to just kind of disrupt and understand why aren't hostels more frequent? 
Yeah, so that's my ultimate question for you is like, why, why are hostels so rare right now? Yeah, I, I don't know to, to answer the question. I mean, it's not a super lucrative business, so people look at just buying a Airbnb or something, you print a lot more money that way. Um, but it, it is odd, the, the kind of juxtaposition. You know, if you go to a hostel in Europe, you'll see plenty of Americans staying there. Right? So it's not like Americans are afraid to stay in hostels. It's like they don't know it's an option or, or they just don't think about it when they're booking domestic travel. So I do think that's kind of the missing piece is raising awareness that it is an option. I'd like to layer on what that uh, very smart gentleman just started. Uh, I'm going to lay my next card on that journey that you're on. And what you mentioned is you know someone in Nashville, right? Uh, Greenville and, and Chattanooga. And Chattanooga. You have Western North Carolina in, your, in the palm of your hand. And the three of you who know each other could, and you have the Appalachian Trail, you have so many things. Lines. So I would advocate to get professional help initially on um, your marketing. And, um, the reason you would do that is for forward order booking to see if A, people you build them and they come, or B, I'm going to develop those unique characteristics that perhaps encompasses Chattanooga, Greenville, all of WNC and be able to capitalize on that. And you could have a music through line, you could have a hiking through line. Um, whoever you want your desired audience to be, once you have those demographics coming, then the other interesting people are going to come too. So I'm just layering that on what he's like. Great, thank you. All right, I think we have time for one more question. So my question is from the perspective of someone who's never stayed in the hostel. And my question is around sort of the operational expectation that you have to secure people's belongings. And if I book a uh, rack, a uh, bed in the rack room, um, like where does my stuff go? Like, you know, how do I know that I can leave my whatever behind and have it secured? And also, laying around to that, sorry, two-part question, um, if I'm traveling with somebody, like, do I book a certain bunk, or like, how do I know that I can be adjacent to them? I know you have double rooms, but, and private rooms, but how do I, how do I know when I'm booking, when I book? Yeah, so, um, first question, start, start with the second question, so I remember that one. Um, you can, uh, it says like bunk one, bunk two, top bunk, bottom bunk on the actual booking engine, so you can pick which one you want to stay in. Um, and then, I don't know, state security. So yeah, even in the shared rooms, I mean, most people are trustworthy, but not all people. So every every bed will have its own locker underneath, um, including the lock, okay. provided if you need it. So. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, let's go to the next question.